ID, ladies and gentlemen, that is the topic of today. Identity, that's the first step to self-awareness. And so the question I wanna ask you is, what is your identity? How do you identify yourself? And when was the last time you've put in detail how you identify yourself? Because if you haven't done this, and this is really limiting your capability of self-awareness. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because we talk about a lot of different ways to motivate yourself, how to be successful and what it takes and all these type of things. But the first step on such a basic level is how you truly identify yourself. So what are some of the things people know you for? Right? What are some of the characteristics that people know you for? Do people know you for your smile? You always seem to be happy. You're a very intelligent person. Maybe people know you to be a total asshole, right? But what do people know you for? Really think about that and write some of those traits down. You know, people notice me for my looks. People notice me for my, for my smile. People notice me for my hard work ethic. People notice me for this, 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 that, and that, and that, right? And then look at all of those traits, write them down. And then how many of those traits do you identify with? Do you disagree with them? Do you, do you agree with them, right? Do you feel as though you are just as intelligent as people think you are? Or you are as beautiful as people think you are, right? Or do people think you're a complete asshole, but you feel as though you're a very nice person, that you're a very good person, right? And so that is gonna help you really clear things up, right? Because a big part of ID, of course, is how other people see you, but it's also how you see yourself. And the reason why that's so important is because if you don't know yourself, if you haven't truly identified yourself and your own traits, it is very easy to make the mistake of adopting the identity that people give you. So after you made the list of traits that other people know you for and the traits that you know you for, the next step is you're gonna decide which traits you're gonna get rid of and which traits you're gonna keep. Now the main focus is going to be the list of traits that you wanna keep, what you wanna be. That's the important list. So you're gonna take that list and then you're gonna focus on embodying the traits that are listed there, right? And one of the ways of embodying it is self-talk, right? What you tell yourself, what you tell yourself you are. And so for example, when was the last time you messed up or made a mistake on something? You said, oh man, I'm so stupid. And then how many times do you do that on a weekly, daily, or even hourly basis? You know, I'm a fat piece of whatever. Well, people tell, two people talk to themselves in a very negative way. Maybe you do this, maybe not to such a degree where you curse yourself out, but you may say some things about you, oh, I'm so retarded, I'm so stupid, I'm so, I'm so this and that, oh, I look weird, oh my God, I look terrible, I look like a mess, oh, my, my face is awkward, or whatever people say. And this type of self-talk, if you say it enough, it becomes your identity. So we want to push back against that and switch gears a little bit. And one of the ways to do that is to take that list of desirable traits, the traits you want to embody, and then you're going to say that you are those things. And then you're going to be those things. You're going to work towards embodying all of those traits. And it is in your best interest to work on embodying these traits very diligently on a daily basis. Because this is, this is reprogramming of the human mind, which is harder to get the older you are. So, if you're in your 30s like me, you have 30 years of reprogramming to do. You gotta swap some things out. You gotta, you gotta fish through all of your, your traumas and your beliefs and your, your past history and, and experiences. And you gotta start reprogramming your mind. And so a good place to start is with self-talk. I am, insert trade. I am, insert trait. It feels good to be, insert trait. I am thankful for being, insert trait. So 
So let's talk about what we feel we deserve, what we know we deserve, what other people think we deserve. All these things are very important to take into account, right? Because what other people feel you deserve and what you feel you deserve are very important because if you truly feel as though you deserve something, you will do the things that you need to do to get what you know you deserve. But you got to truly set that in stone, what you deserve. You have to know what you deserve. So there has to be a certain level of conviction. Do you deserve to be in a happy, loving relationship? Do you deserve to be wealthy? Do you deserve to be in shape? Right? Do you deserve abundance? What do you know you deserve? Right? Make a list of all those things. And then look at some of the things that other people feel you deserve or don't deserve. Do you agree or disagree? Right? And so ultimately, when you put together the list of all the things that you know you deserve, you feel it in your heart that you deserve these things. The next step is to explain to yourself, validate why you deserve these things. Why do you deserve that happiness? Why do you deserve the wealth? Why you? Why do you think that you're entitled to that? Why do you think that you deserve that personally? And then of course, then after that set, we could start moving on to the doing. Now I'm gonna move forward, but before I do that, I just wanna recap a little bit, right? Because your identity is split between two things, being and doing, right? So the traits, that list of traits, that's your being, that's who you are, but your identity is also what you do and the doing should line up with the being who you are and what you do should run parallel to each other those things should be in sync and if they're not you got some decisions to, to make you got some things to clarify right and so we started with the list of traits of who you want to be who you are what you identify as in your being and then we talked about the what you feel you deserve and that's that thing that you know in your heart where you deserve this thing because of who you are. But then there's what you deserve because of what you do and are willing to do. So now let's get into the doing, right? The doing, in this case, when we see something that we want, when we set a goal, there's a certain commitment that we have to make, and that commitment is to the goal, and that goal requires action. That goal requires the doing. And so there's a certain level of internal dialogue that has to go on where you talk yourself into the doing, and the catalyst for that is the being, the desire, right? All that comes from the being. And so, are you the type of person where when you set a goal, do you talk yourself into it or are you more likely to talk yourself out of it? Say, for example, you meet a beautiful individual, ladies, fellas, either or, you meet a beautiful individual and you really like that person and they really stand out to you and you want to develop a relationship with this person, you want to get to know this person. What do you do? Right? Because there's a decision to make. Do you start a conversation with this person? Do you approach them? Do you just let them slide? And if you just let them slide, well, did you feel as though you deserve to have a connection with that person? Right? Did you feel as though you were good enough for that person? That you were beautiful enough? That you were intelligent enough? That you were valuable enough? Because if you truly do feel as though you are enough, if you feel as though you're more than enough, you should have no problem approaching that person. Not unless you have a reason to be weary of that person. So this kind of ties into self-esteem. and Self-esteem is self-esteem. It is the esteem that you set for yourself. This can't be given to you. Self-esteem cannot be given to you, right? So when you talk yourself into something, 
that you know you should be doing, that you have to do in order to get what you want, that's typically what you should do, right? Talk yourself into it every day, every time. For instance, when you work out, you talk yourself into every set, every rep. You talk yourself to getting up in the morning. You talk, to, you talk yourself into staying on top of your diet. You talk yourself into the things you want, and you talk yourself out of the things you don't want. You talk yourself out of binge eating. You talk yourself out of the bad diet. You talk yourself out of taking unnecessary rest days. You talk, you take, you talk yourself out of slacking off. Right? Just like I would love to talk myself out of my, uh, my speech impediments. <laughs> right? But I guess that's a part of who I am a little bit, right? The speech impediment. And um, it was a lot worse at one point. I'm, work I'm working on it. But at the same time, I embrace it. I don't speak perfectly. I don't pretend to. It's a part of who I am. And I'm willing to accept that while focusing on being a better speaker. I am a good speaker. And then I do the good speaking. <laughs> right? And I talk myself into getting on camera and doing the good speaking. <laughs> Right? So there's plenty of examples to this type of thing, right? But ask yourself, right? Look at the goals you set. Look at the things you want, the desires you have. And then ask yourself, do I talk myself into the things I want more so, or do I talk myself out of them? And if I do, why do I talk myself out of them? Why am I talking myself out of the things that I want? Why am I talking myself out of doing the things that I need to do in order to get the things that I deserve that stems from who I am as a person and answer that question. And then after that, you can get into how to turn that around. So this wraps up my little introduction into identity, right? All I really wanted to do here was establish the being and the doing and then connect the two with the deserving and the desire, right? And so the overall goal is identifying who you are and identifying what you do and bridging those two things together and aligning them and just asking yourself the tough questions and making the lists. So if anything, for some of you who take this seriously, you'll make this into a little homework assignment. And feel free to reach out to me on social media, Facebook, YouTube, uh, my, my, my blog over at tribebynoir.tv, etc. And having said that, I'll talk about this subject and other subjects in later videos. So I will catch you guys then.